A little something a little different today. We got the 2020 Ascend 12T that you guys have been seeing me fish from. Today we're going to review it, walk through it, give you the pros and cons, what I do and don't like about it. Probably something that would be helpful before you make your decision. If you are making a decision whether you like this kayak or not or look in the market for a kayak at all. Uh, I've had it for just over a year. I've fished on it several times. I've got plenty of videos out if you guys want to check them out. But uh, just over a year is long enough to where I think I got a pretty solid opinion on what I do and don't like about this kayak and how it handles and just just overall fishability, man. You got to remember this review is based on fishability and that's it. So without further ado, man, let's check this kayak out from front to back, starting with the front and we'll work our way to the back. Up at the front, man, you got the carrying handle. I'll leave my flag attached to it so I don't forget it at home. Moving back a little bit, this little deck area, I don't really use it. I mean, I guess it'd be great to store something if you're going to um, kayak all day, maybe leave some rain jacket. I don't know exactly what you would do up here. I can't reach it when I'm kayaking, so it would have to be something more or less that I'm going to use when I get off camping gear, something like that. Uh, further back, the casting deck. This is great. Foot pegs, adjustable. They adjust all the way back. Pretty solid design. This, I don't exactly have, you can't find nothing exactly what that's for, but I'm pretty sure it's to rest your paddle when you, uh, basically like if you was to stand up, be sight casting, I'd find it good to rest your paddle in here so it don't roll all the way up off the kayak or things like that. A little further back, we got mounted in gear tracks on each side. I don't really use them because I don't accessorize a ton right now. I have one rod holder and that's for just basically unhooking a fish when i hook a fish bring it in i put my rod in here unhook it good to go uh, you could put anchor cleats gopro mounts i mounted this extra mount for my gopro mount dry storage awesome humongous got these for deck support i'm guessing for when you're standing but those can move forward backward great to mount your fish finder run wire store i always store uh, my camera gear, my uh, firearm, things like that in this compartment. Completely bone dry. Keys, wallet, snacks, whatever it may be here in this compartment. Uh, going online before I bought this, I read the reviews about it. If you tighten it too tight and then step on it or so, these are plastic threads and they will get jammed. It, gets, it, it can get tough, so don't over tighten it. It will not leak. The hatch itself is above the kayak, so you don't really got to worry about sitting water. Molded in trays. These right here, cup holder, another molded in tray. Uh, I store fish grips, pliers, uh, maybe a pack of lure or two here. But super wet ride, so you can't leave much here because this fills up with water. So will this, so will this, and all these little grooves here. The seat. Now, in 2020, they released this seat. This is a high back seat. I don't know if you can tell or not, but... If you're in the market for a used one, you can always tell the difference because the previous models, the seat's still about right here and it's kind of more square shape. This is a high back seat, pretty comfortable. I mean, it's, it's breathable mesh. It doesn't soak in water. These little molds here were the original seat rest. You had three positions you could adjust from one, two, and three. This bar sat in. I modded my seat, but we'll get onto that later. So I can't use that. I'm in a fixed position, cannot go forward and backward. But I didn't mod this until I knew exactly where I wanted that seat. Now with that mod, this is kind of a whole nother storage. Your scuppers. Moving on back. Rod holder. Flush mounted on each side. Uh, pretty awesome to have. I don't really, I don't carry no more than two rods. So it's perfect. I always have one in my lap, one back here. And I'll put the net in the other one maybe. This is built for a cooler. Nice little tank wheel. I usually just put my anchor. Uh, you could put a cooler if you needed it. I don't ever really kayak long enough to need a cooler. I carry a jug of water. Uh, plenty room though. You can see how deep that thing is. I mean, it's 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 pretty good. Kind of like the front. They have this. Uh, I mean, it's just a, a couple of bungees, I guess. Like I say, man, if it's a windy day, you want to pack something that can blow away, maybe. But you can't reach it. I mean, when you're this thing. I mean, it's it's stable, but. You're a long shot from this, so I just don't see, you know, unless it's long, something long, you can grab it from that end, but, you know, 
handle in the back, drain plug, moving around to this side. It comes with a paddle holder and that's pretty sweet so you don't have to mount it yourself. They're already, and they do fold away while you're paddling. I find that pretty helpful. And that's pretty much it, man. This is, it's a plain kayak. It's simple. It's just meant to fish and that's it. You're not getting, you know, the Cadillac of all the kayaks when you get this. Now that being said, plain kayak, it's nothing above and beyond. It's not your old towns. It's not your Hobies. But when you're looking at this kayak, similar to me, I just wanted a cheap kayak to get out and go fish on. Uh, but just to get out there and fish comfortably, safely, and, uh, and doing so, this kayak is great for that. Now let's go over some of the pros and cons. Stability. Incredibly stable. It's only 31 inches wide. It's one of the more narrow kayaks on the market. But before I bought this, what made me the most hesitant is going online and reading about people saying it's unstable, you can't stand on it, things like that. But a little bit of advice when you're shopping for kayaks, take things like that with a grain of salt because I've had zero issue fishing from this thing, reaching over the side. Now, I'm not going to go and stand up on the kayak and stand on one side and say, oh, it's not stable. That's ridiculous. Fishing from it, you can't go wrong with stability. I, I mean, I got a buddy of mine that has the exact same kayak, fishes the exact same waters, open bay, bayous, creeks. Never once did I feel like I was going to flip on this thing. Um, and, and that being said, uh, a lot of the things you read, I mean, I even, uh, even the Old Town, the Old Town Predator, that thing's 36 inches wide, one of the biggest, one of the nicest kayaks you can buy on the market. And you'll still find people saying, oh, it's tippy, I felt unstable. Uh, it's crazy to think that. That thing's 36 inches wide. Uh, but yeah, take it with a grain of salt, man. Moving on, the dry storage. This, uh, this was a good design. I, I got a feeling they knew it was going to be a wet ride. But this, the fact that they raised this storage... Uh, and sealed it with a gasket of course this is a very dry compartment now I don't know if this was a flaw or if this is something they missed when I first bought it this kind this area and the very back area these little decks hold water so when you get with splashes of water eventually it accumulates and this is kind of soft now this holds water and these recessed screws man that water gets in there and it ain't coming out so what I was finding was that, that the water was coming through here through each one of these screws that were holding water. So what I did was I backed them all out, silicone the screw and put them all in, in the front and the back, zero water gets in. That was all that needed to be done here in the front and here in the back. It might be something that you're, uh, that you should just check as soon as you get it. Super easy, back them out, silicone the screw, put them back in, let it sit overnight, ready to go, completely dry. Next thing I want to talk about, it, it comes with your accessory rails, which is great, but it also, it sits high in the water, get plenty of room to accessorize, giant sturdy walls. You can put more mounts, you can put anything you want on these little areas, this area, plenty of room to place accessories, cleats, camera mounts, fishing rods, plenty of room. That's a definite bonus. The next major upside, price, $5.99. Again, you'd be really hard pressed to find a brand new kayak for $5.99. That's this fishable. I, don't, I can't speak for all of them because there's Sun Dolphins, there's all kinds of brands out there. I cannot speak for them. Uh, $5.99 is a really good deal for a brand new fishing kayak. Next key thing I want to talk about is the size and space available on this kayak. It's 12 foot long, 31 inches wide, which doesn't seem like much. Plain for a kayak though so much space i can lay my rods down flat while i'm paddling in case i see a redfish or a trout busting the surface on some bait pick it up toss it i don't have to worry about anything falling over plenty of meat on this kayak to keep your goods in here sometimes i set my tackle box here I have no worries underneath here i can put my stringer i can put an individual tackle box my landing net i mean you can fit so much under here plenty of room so much room look at that so much room to put whatever you need although i do pack light i think it's awesome to have room now this ain't no selling video i'm not trying to sell this kayak because i'm fixing to get into the cons and there's plenty but i don't think it makes it a bad kayak it's something that uh you know you you get with experience 
time on the water in the kayak, you find flaws, just like anything else. You could probably buy a $3,000 kayak. You're gonna find something you don't like, others may not like, but I'm gonna point them out just in case it's a deal maker or breaker for you guys. Tracking. Tracking is terrible on this thing. I mean, you can't sit still without spinning in circles in any kind of current or wind because I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, a part of the comfortability, how it sits so high in the water. It's a beefier kayak. It takes on wind, but yet it's super flat. They called it more of a tri-haul design, but it's really not. This is the only fin you have, and it, it man, it's, it don't work. Now, easy fix for that, add a rudder, great. But they put this handle, which you need, especially when you fish by yourself and you got to, you know, you got to grab one end or the other, drag it, move it around in tight spaces. They put this handle here, which kind of eliminates uh, a place to add an easy rudder without having to do all kinds of crazy stuff, which I'd like to take this off and mount it here, but I don't really want to lose that handle. So I'm sure there's some kind of creative way to add a rudder, but it's just not that easy. So definitely a flaw. You need to be able to add a rudder. Second biggest flaw, all this space, no scupper plugs. Where does that water go? Nowhere. It sits in here, which would created that leak. But that's not as big of an issue until it gets back to here. All these places that are uneven, because it is cheap. You're paying $5.99 for this thing. Remember, guys, when that water gets in here, it stays and it just piles up. So you really can't use these things. These scuppers are here. You got one here, one here, and two under there. I'll show you those. Right there. You see those? But again, this is sort of recessed. Water stays in there. Water gets all in these grooves, in this, fills up in here. Thankfully, these tanks, like I said, are up above these hatches. So no water gets in them. That's not an issue. But it does not drain. Same thing for back here. These scuppers, they're practically a high point. This is beneath it. All this is beneath it. So water piles up here. Water piles up there. You cannot leave nothing that you don't want to get wet in there. Which you really shouldn't anyway. But I do feel like it could drain much better. Those are really the only complaints I have. And they're not even that big of an issue. It's just me being picky. You know, being picky about my experience on the water. What could make it easier for me to fish. Or just have a better time out there kayaking. Uh, lastly, let's talk about the few modifications that I did. Because they might be something you're interested in. The anchor trolley. Huge, huge, huge addition to this because it does not track well. I fish a lot of shallow waters, one foot, two foot, but a lot of times in the shallow marshes when I'm looking at a redfish trying to sight cast it and my kayak gets to turn it around, that's terrible. I have no rudder to keep me in the same direction I want to be. So as soon as I put my paddle down, I start turning. That is a huge no-no. So I put this anchor trolley in and I have this cheap tree stake, what I use as an anchor pole, so as soon as I start seeing the fish, I can stick that anchor straight through this triangle, lock it in place and position myself with this. So this is kind of my, not only just an anchor, but it was kind of my fix for the no rudder in the situations that it applies. Rod holder, it's, um, I mean, this is more of a, like a preference thing. It's just something that I wanted, but I wanted a forward facing. They got the two rear facing. I wanted the forward facing rod holder for when I catch a fish, I need a place to put my rod other than in my lap where the fish is flopping around. I like to put my rod, my rod here, open up the spool, and unhook the fish. Just makes it a little bit easier. The biggest mod is the seat raise modification. They're all over the internet. I got my idea off of YouTube from another, another video, and I just kind of put my own little touches on it. These brackets were just aluminum square tubing. Right there, boom. I cut the top out. Now you can just use angle, it works just fine. I went with square tubing simply because I wanted to have those thicker walls. I'm a heavy guy. I don't want to be bending this stuff and flexing it. It worked out fine. I may not have needed it. It might have been overkill, but there you go. I fastened it here and here. And then I got another bracket in the back. Same thing, fastened it here, fastened it here. Cut little grooves out because of the way these legs are angled at about 45 degrees or so. Sits perfectly folds fine does not affect the ability or the function of this chair it simply raises it as you can tell here I mean nice little raise created a nice storage I didn't even expect that from it but when I happened it I mean it made it so much easier and I can put things underneath me like 
uh, an individual tackle trade, net, stringer, all that good stuff. And I mean, and a seat raise did not make it less stable for me. It's got a lot to do with uh, your own sense of stability, man, and how comfortable you are on these kayaks. But uh, man, I could stay on that kayak for much longer than when I didn't have it and it was sitting directly on the kayak, which was still pretty comfortable. I was just wanting to be a little more relaxed when I paddle and when I fish. So huge modification, probably my biggest one that I'm probably the most happy with. So all in all, I love the kayak. I mean, I, it's cheap. You gotta remember it's cheap, but I knew that when I bought it, I just wanted it to fish on, make sure I even was still into kayak fishing because I kayak fished before, but I wanted to make sure I was still into it because they can get expensive. Now I do plan on upgrading uh, in the near future, getting a little bit different kayak. I want a pedal kayak because it's just superior to paddling. It is a plain kayak that is very, very fishable. So, I mean, if there's any questions you guys got, uh, I'd be glad to answer it. Uh, hit me up on Instagram. It's easier to respond. Sometimes I don't get the YouTube notifications, but either way, I'll definitely go through my comments, try to answer questions. Uh, I got more pictures, anything else that I can help you guys with. Just hit me up. Let me know. I uh, hope it was thorough enough, but if there's, like I say, if there's anything I left out, anything that you've seen in the video that you got a question about that I didn't come across and uh, talk about, ask. I will definitely let you know as best I can and as quick as I can. So, hope you all enjoyed it, man. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope this helped you make a decision. Until next time.